Welcome to the floor, fantasy and sci-fi lore. We are still in Fallout. This is a faction episode focused on the Enclave. We are going to talk about the rise of the Enclave before the Great War. We will talk about the coup of the U.S. government by Thomas Eckhart and his followers and the execution of those who disagreed with them. And we will talk about the establishment of the control vault with a dual meaning. Uh, control meaning outside of the experiments and control as in those who are intended to control the others. So if that is what you're looking for, this is the episode for you. Roll the intro. Do you remember the first story that was so spellbinding? It drove you to break the rules and stay up all night to keep reading, keep watching, keep playing. So good. You forgot your life and lived there. So good. The moment it ended, you asked yourself, what next? Welcome to the floor. Our goal is to take you back, take you deeper, to explore and understand more and relive that childlike wonder. Join us as we dive deep into humanity's greatest stories, no matter how they are told, through books, movies, television, even games. One of us does an in-depth research on the topic. One of us is familiar with the topic. And one of us knows nothing. So the right questions will always be asked and addressed for anyone coming into the topic, regardless of how much you know. Enjoy another world, another adventure, another spellbinding story. Join us on the floor. Today we're back in Fallout. And today, I want to talk about the Enclave. So, before the bombs of this is like a government organization that survives the apocalypse. And I'm going to just cover kind of their history and their motives and kind of the things just that they're all about. Yeah. So, this is a faction episode, uh, kind of like a Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, in the gameplay, you won't actually encounter the Enclave until Fallout 2. Uh, while our story lore episodes are still kind of focused on Fallout 1, but we are doing a faction episode here. So, before the bombs dropped in 2077, the people who will form the Enclave are a select group of people from the U.S. government, more so like the Deep State, the Shadow mm -hmm. Government, if you will. Uh, the ones who control and govern the people who don't want you to know that they control and govern. Is the rich and the powerful. They all get together and, you know, they know uh, the war is pending and mutual shared destruction and all this. And uh, they went into their selected vaults, the ones that did not have strange experiments going on inside them, uh, known as the control vaults. Uh, control kind of has a double meaning here. You know, it's the control experiment control, but it's also the ones who control others right right interesting yeah this is kind of a double entendre that they used for the control vaults uh, yeah see i always thought like the control vaults were just part of like good experimentation process you've got to have some controls but then i realized that like the the people who didn't want to be toyed with and were making the kind of decisions that were deciding what how people were being toyed with were going into the control vaults what is it in the show uh, the actor's wife, he's like, she's like, I want to make sure we get in one of the good ones. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? <laughs> and, yeah. And this is what she means. That's what it means. What are the controls where people aren't being toyed with? They're just trying to keep you alive. Yeah. Uh, um, as well as, uh, in the enclave, if you're p part of one of the control vaults, you're still a U.S. citizen and still considered uh, one of those, but anyone from any of the other experimental vaults is not. They're considered outsiders, according to the Enclave. Really? I did not yes. know that. They do not consider them U.S. citizens anymore. And U.S. citizen is their ultimate, like, you're yeah. U.S. citizen, you're special, you, you get a, a ticket to the spaceship. Yes, a ticket to the spaceship. So, oh, um, yeah. Um, Basically, you can just take everything evil you can imagine about the U.S. government and put it into one little box or vault. The Enclave would be it. You know, these these are bad dudes doing bad things, and they know they're bad, you know. Um, they have stockpiled weapons and tech for after the bombs have dropped. 
Uh, they were caught off caught off guard a little bit when the bombs dropped. So well, um, two hours, you know. I mean, not not a lot of breathing over there. Okay, like, but I'm yeah. three hours away. Be like, yes, you don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like some some U.S. Uh, officials and congressmen don't make it. But it's also a little vague. It's like that was kind of on purpose. Uh, mm. You know, they're like, yeah, you disagree with us. And, and because you disagree with us, we're, we're just going to kill you. Yeah. Um, I think more let you die is the phrase, right? <laughs> well, okay. So when the uh, shadow government takes over the U.S. government, uh, Thomas Eckhart, um, he's, he's going to be kind of like the founder of uh on uh, enclave uh he's the one who pulls the funding to build like the major headquarters that will become the enclave um and he's the one who one day gets all the congressmen in a room and it's like hey should we continue this war or should we go to a contingency plan anyone who said uh they would continue the resource war uh was locked in the room and gassed yo Okay, so they do kill some. So, like, like they, they are straight up, we, we just kill you if you disagree with us. Disagree. Yeah, you know. no. Um, and th- that was people who were more in tune with what was actually going on, right? Rather, other people that are just like, yeah, let the waste take them. So, they're, they're also purists, you know, racists, if you will. Uh, they believe anyone who is not from the Enclave, anyone from the Enclave is superior to everybody else. They also think anyone who's a mutant, mutated, or changed in any way should be killed, um, you know, because they want to keep humans pure human. It's kind right. of their justification there, and that uh, mutants will taint to the bloodline of humans. Um, like, for an example, one way they try to make this happen is they make a virus that uh, when it infects mutants, it'll kill them, right? And they're trying to get it into the water system to just wipe out all the mutants so yeah i I brought up thomas eckhard um so he becomes the president after doing this assassination thing where he's like anyone disagrees with me we kill them all all right i'm the president now (laughs) right Uh, this kind of movie after emerging from the vaults um they do go back to their old ways uh of america practicing slavery religious brainwashing later on doing human experiments they are the ones who refer to America as the capital waste. And believe it is theirs to govern. Uh, you you see them in the uh, when they first kind of show up. You just meet the the floating eye bots. That are like, yeah, so, that's the first sign you're in enclave territory. The eye bots. Yeah, that, that's their tech because they're they're observing everything yeah. around. Right, they're observing the faults. They're observing the waste. They're trying to keep an eye on things um they're also real still really big in being like we are the u.s government and they are still fighting communism and if they think you're doing anything communistic (laughs) you're on their hit list you know as they're like funny we are capitalists (laughs) they're still fighting communism they're like the rest of us are fighting for food (laughs) and they're like we're fighting communism don't you share that food don't you share that? Well, not only that, but in all societies throughout most of human history are communist, right? Uh huh. Because society essentially begins with a family that functions very much like a communist society, right? Like everybody does their part. Like people have chores, you know, in a family, but only one person is actually bringing in stuff and then they share it with everybody because it's a family. And then when you move to a two family unit, it's really just an expansion of the family, right? Then you move to like multi generational families, right? You've got grandparents, parents, kids, and 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 they're spread out like that. And it's only when societies start to become big enough that you move into more of a free market system because at that point you're now trading with someone you don't know. You're like, I don't mm-hmm. know you, I never met you, I'm not just giving you this anymore. I want something in return. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it was found that like people you know formed small towns and they'd all work together but then we're yeah. trading with a, another nearby town that is when you know it became yeah more. yeah so i mean like that that's kind of the rise of tribes and everything and so i think it's so funny that they're fighting communists 
communism when the world has been reduced to this very you know tribal small village state and people are essentially kind of engaging in those kind of economies at that small scale because that's that's how we start societies right a communal effort to just survive and it's only when we become big enough and large enough we can begin to engage in free trade because you, you don't know everybody anymore, right? Like I think the, the real collapse of any communistic group is done by size, right? Because when you're distributing out goods, if you understand the specific circumstances why someone is getting more or something better than you, it's okay, right? You're like, yeah, that's Barbara. I know she rolled her ankle the other day. She needs a little help. She's, you know, trying to heal up. I understand why she's getting more protein than the rest of us. She's injured and she needs to heal. That's okay. Some random guy you never met gets two more stakes for his family than yours. You're furious, right? And that, that's the point where communism falls apart, right? Where you start to have a community where not everybody is closely associated and connected to everyone. You can't maintain it, right? At that point, people start pulling favors and you got nepotism and cronyism and the whole thing falls apart. We've seen this a thousand times, right? It doesn't it doesn't scale well, but at the very small level, that's how communities start. And this upsets the enclave. And this upsets the enclave. You're like, what if they never stop? Be like, that's not what history says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the group um that is uh using the vaults to set up the experiment on groups of people, uh, you know, these strange experiments to test out how to make a functional multi-generational spaceship to leave Earth behind and colonize another planet. Uh -huh. Now, this doesn't just come out of left field that they're like, let's just build a spaceship. Uh, they, they do know that there's a presence of aliens on and around Earth. Yeah, um, and they have been covering it up. Uh, they do have access to some of their technologies, not because the aliens are sharing or working with them at all. They just found some of the tech. Yes, so um, there are several pieces of the more advanced weaponry, the laser weapons, the plasma rep weapons, where there are even logs within Fallout detailing the struggles uh, that they were having to get these this weaponry to work. And then uh, one day they just solved it, and uh, it's like, oh, I wonder if they found a piece of more advanced technology that they were able to incorporate to get us over this hurdle, right? And uh, even in Fallout 1, you fight aliens, right? You mm did? -hmm. Yep. Yep. You you can, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think... Yes, so I think it is a random encounter. So in Fallout 2... Again, it's a step you can skip, but it is the main storyline does go through it in Fallout yeah. 2, but not so much in Fallout 1. Yeah. yeah. So now, the, the Enclave, you know, as you said, you know, you don't really meet them until Fallout 2, and then also in uh, Fallout 3 as well, but they're kind of beat down really hard in uh, Fallout 3, and uh, we, we don't really see them after this, um, except for... Now that the TV show has come out, Dr. Ziggy Wilzig, the man whose head is so valuable, he was yes. working for an enclave. For the enclave, yeah. And and so this is a re-emergence of the enclave. Um, and then uh, Fallout 4, they just dropped a new quest uh, involving the enclave. Oh, uh, and, and yet with the, the update that came out, yeah. That's right. And so, you know, they're starting to put some, some like, you know, more than just a shadow of something that used to exist, that they are still operating, but kind of underground, keeping a hush-hush on their operations. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's our enclave. You know, I don't want to go into the details of what's going on in 3 and 4, because I know we're covering more. But yeah, that is essentially the enclave. It's these... These are the guys that uh, the ghoul is talking about when he's like, I want to see the guys pulling the strings. Yes. Dad, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, Vault Tech and the Enclave, right? These are right. the pulling the strings. Yeah. It, and I, I could very much see that uh, they could be in competition. Um, yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. You know, and the Enclave would say that, well, no, we've got jurisdiction over vault -Tec. They work for us. And vault -Tec's like, that was 200 years ago. We're really our own thing now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are our experiments, too. Like, <laughs> we know your goals as well. And, and yeah. we built your vault. So don't yeah. forget that. Don't forget we built your vault, too. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us uh, for our, our faction episode here, uh, one of our shorts on the Enclave. And uh, as always, since we are in Fallout, may the water you drink in the desert not shine at you in the night. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. We have mentioned in the past that if you go to the Patreon page, we have collections of all the different worlds and pieces of lore we have covered. For example, if you want everything we have ever done about Baldur's Gate, from the invention of D&D to Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Dark Alliance. All of that, you can find individual collections for all of those, or just one big collection containing all of Baldur's Gate or all of D&D. So everything we have covered, everything we have covered, Eberron, Marvel, DC, Alien, Zooniverse, Cyberpunk, Dune, and more. We have collections for each of those worlds. And I do want to mention that on the Patreon, the only thing behind the subscription is the treasure room content anything that has been released in the podcast for free is still free there it is just a better organization of the information that the podcast app doesn't let us do they are just a big list and you just got to type in your search words on the patreon there are tags for everything you got fantasy D, &D creature features Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Dark Alliance, all of that. Just an individual tag for those episodes. And as I said, we do have collections just to make this as easy as possible to find what you're looking for. We have learned in the past that a lot of people who listen to the floor, they're interested in one or two of the worlds. And they may check out one or two of the episodes when we switch worlds. But they're really just mostly interested in that. So we just want to like consolidate everything you're looking for to make it just as easy as possible to access. So... Check that out just to make your life easier. And uh, we are working at making sure you can download any of the free episodes there. So even if you're going to lose Wi-Fi or connection, you can get the episodes you want before that happens. Or just not burn your data while you're traveling to and from work or whatever else is you do while you listen. And uh, thank you. I hope you continue to enjoy the show.